Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Lorena Law, a practicing medical doctor in women's health, skin health, and integrative medicine. Today, I want to talk about a common question asked by many of my patients, soy and phytoestrogen supplements for menopause symptoms and overall health. If you've been wondering whether these natural alternatives might help with hot flashes, bone health, or heart health, you're not alone. The supplement aisle is full of promises, but what does the actual research tell us? Today, I'll walk you through the science behind phytoestrogen what they can and cannot do, and most importantly, how to make informed decisions that are right for your individual situation. Let's start with basics. Phytoestrogens are naturally occurring compounds found in plants that have a similar structure to estrogen, our body's primary female hormone. The key word here is similar. They're not identical to human estrogen, but they can bind to estrogen receptors in our bodies. The main types you'll encounter are isoflavones, primarily found in soy products like tofu, tempeh and edamame, lignans, abundant in flax seeds and whole grains, comestins, found in red clover, which you'll see in many supplements. Now here's something fascinating from the research. Asian populations who traditionally consume 30 to 50 milligrams of isoflavones daily through their diet have historically reported fewer menopausal symptoms compared to Western women, who typically consume less than 3 milligrams per day. This observation sparked decades of research into whether phytoestrogens could be a natural approach to managing menopause symptoms. So what do the signs actually show? Let let me share some key findings from well-designed studies. A comprehensive meta-analysis by Chen and colleagues in 2015 looked at 15 high-quality randomized control trials. They found that phytoestrogens significantly reduce hot flash frequency compared to placebo without serious side effects. However, the effects were modest. We're not talking about the dramatic relief you might get from hormone replacement therapy. Another important study by Taku and colleagues found that soy isoflavones reduce hot flash frequency by about 20% and severity by 26% compared to placebo. Interestingly, they discovered a threshold effect. Supplements providing at least 18.8 mg of genistin that's a specific type of isoflavone were more than twice as effective as those with lower amounts. But here is what's crucial to understand. The effects are gradual. Most studies show that you need to take phytoestrogens consistently for at least 6 to 12 weeks before seeing meaningful effects. This isn't a quick fix. The research extends beyond just hot flashes. Let's talk about two other important areas, bone health and cardiovascular health. For bone health, a 2022 meta-analysis by Baranska and colleagues found that soy isoflavones can help slow bone loss after menopause. The study showed modest but statistically significant increase in bone mineral density at the spine, hip, and femoral neck. The optimal dose appeared to be around 90 to 106 mg daily taken for 12 to 24 months. For heart health, a study by Sethia Palin and colleagues in 2018 found that women taking 66 mg of soy isoflavones daily for 6 months had a 27% reduction in their 10-year coronary heart disease risk and a 37% reduction in heart attack risk compared to those taking soy protein without isoflavones. These are encouraging findings, but I want to emphasize that we're talking about risk reduction and prevention, not treatment of existing conditions. Now here's where it gets interesting and why some people see great results while others don't. Your response to phytoestrogens depends significantly on your gut bacteria. Only about 30 to 50% of people have the specific bacteria needed to convert soy isoflavones into a compound called equal, which is actually the most potent form. Research shows that Asian populations have higher rates of equal production, around 50 to 60% compared to Western populations at 30 to 40%. This may partly explain why traditional Asian diets seem more productive. There's also a study by Verna and colleagues that found Asians absorb soy phytoestrogens better than Caucasians, regardless of their background diet. This suggests there are both genetic and gut microbiome factors at play. What does this mean for you? It means phytoestrogens aren't a one-size-fits-all solution and your individual response may vary greatly. Let's address the elephant in the room, safety concerns, particularly around breast cancer. I often hear patients say they're worried about phytoestrogens 
estrogens because they act like estrogen. The current research actually suggests the opposite and concerns may be unfounded. Multiple studies indicate that dietary soy intake is not only safe but may even be protective against breast cancer. A meta-analysis by Temfer and colleagues found that phytoestrogen supplementation had a safe side effect profile, with only mild gastrointestinal effects being more common than placebo. However, there are some important considerations. If you're taking hormone replacement therapy, blood thinners or cancer medications, you should discuss phytoestrogens with your healthcare provider first. Pregnant and breastfeeding women should avoid phytoestrogen supplements. The quality of supplements varies significantly. One analysis found considerable differences between what's on the label and what's actually in the bottle. So how can you use this information practically? First, consider food sources before supplements. Traditional whole soy foods like tofu, tempeh, edamame and miso provide phytoestrogens along with protein and other nutrients. Flax seeds are an excellent source of lignans. Aim for one to two servings of phytoestrogen foods daily. If you're considering supplements, look for products that provide 30 to 80 milligrams of isoflavones daily. Choose supplements that have been third-party tested for purity and potency. Be patient. Give it at least 12 weeks to see if you notice benefits. Keep a symptom diary to track any changes. For bone health specifically, the research suggests you need higher doses, around 90 to 106 milligrams daily, and longer treatment periods of 12 to 24 months. Remember the individual variation factor. If you don't see results after three to six months of consistent use, phytoestrogens may not be the right approach for you, and that's perfectly normal. Let's put all this in perspective. Phytoestrogens can be a helpful tool for some women, particularly for mild to moderate menopausal symptoms, and as part of a comprehensive approach to long-term health. They're not as potent as hormone replacement therapy for severe symptoms, but they offer moderate results with a good safety profile. The effects on bone health and cardiovascular risk are modest but meaningful for prevention. The key is having realistic expectations and understanding that they work best as part of a holistic approach that includes a healthy diet, regular exercise, stress management, and good sleep habits. Some women do well with phytoestrogens alone, others benefit from combining them with other strategies, and some find hormone replacement therapy is the right choice for them. The bottom line is this, phytoestrogens have solid research support for modest benefits in managing menopausal symptoms and supporting long-term health, but they're not magic bullets. If you're considering them, start with food sources, be patient with the timeline, and work with a healthcare provider who can help you navigate your individual situation. Remember, the best approach to menopause and women's health is one that's tailored to you based on good science and supports your overall well-being. Thank you for watching and I hope this information helps you make decisions that's right for you.